Hi and welcome back to Bill's Cichlid Room. Today we're going to do a species profile on the Hypsellicarda temporaris, commonly known as the chocolate or emerald cichlid. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and click the like button if you like the video and please leave a comment. Hypercellicara temporaris. They come from the Amazon River Basin in various rivers in Brazil, Colombia and Peru. The name temporaris comes from the word temple, meaning high forehead. The males can reach about 12 inches in size with the females a little smaller and the males can develop a, fat, a fatty lump on the forehead. In the wild, the temperature range is between 77 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's probably best to try and match that in your, in your aquariums. With its soft water up to a hardness of about 20 degrees and a pH of between 5 and 7. Despite its size, it's quite a peaceful cichlid and it can be kept in a community setting with a suitable sized fish. They are said to be quite aggressive towards their own kind, but they actually um, they do calm down as they get older and you can actually keep them with uh, other cichlids including Muraro, Discus, Angels, Severin, various catfishes including the L numbers, armoured catfish, Carisons, they are quite peaceful and they, they get along with, with most um, most other fish and as long as you've got a large enough tank they, they'll be fine with them and um, as you can see they, I've got a group of four uh, I've had them for about 12 months now and um, they were about an inch and a half in size when I got them and they're now about four and a half to five inches uh, if you watch some of my other videos they did actually pair off a couple of months ago uh, and it looks like I've got two pairs and um, one of the pairs I've started spawning uh, on quite a regular basis actually the the, the laying eggs uh, like once a month and the, the eggs have actually hatched twice so I have managed to raise a few fry not many there's only about four or five of them I didn't actually siphon that many out and um, so yeah, what I'm hoping is next time they do spawn I, I will siphon more out uh, and grow them on so saying that they're a community type fish, as you can see in this tank, uh, they, they shared it with a group of Geophagus cerementsis and there's some of the, the black Corydoras in there, the Swartzai, and there's also a couple of rogue uh, West African fish in there, if you can see them, it's the, the Buffalo Heads and the uh, Tianti. Um, it was two groups as a, a breeding project that my wife got, but they, unfortunately they all turned out to be male. So yeah, I've put them in this tank because again they're quite peaceful and they stay towards the bottom. Uh, yeah, and it's quite a nice community. They all seem to get on. The chocolates have a little go at each other from time to time, but yeah, nothing too serious. They are omnivore fish. Uh, in the wild, they're actually known to feed from the surface. Uh, so they eat like bugs, crickets, uh, flies, that sort of thing. So what I've been feeding them on the last few weeks is uh, this food that I got sent from uh, from Absolute, uh, the Cloverleaf, uh, Cloverleaf brand. So it's some floating uh, pellets that I've been giving them because they do like to feed from the surface. And uh, some of the sinking pellets I put in the tank, mainly for the geophagus and the catfish and the, the, the West African uh, fish. So yeah, they, they do um, really well on this. So as you can see, I, I give them a mix of both. Um, like put it, pop it in the tank. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the sinking pellets do actually sink, go right down to the bottom. Um, so the geophagus just stay around to see what's on offer, uh, and the, the catfish did have the fill of the uh, the sinking pellets, and the geophagus finish them off. So yeah, as you can see, here, they do actually, they do like uh, the, the floating pellets, and um, yeah, the. They're the, the thriving on this over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so 
talking about them spawning in the past, they are open spawners, uh, but I've had them, uh, this is from a couple of months ago, uh, actually laying eggs in the plant pot. So if you, I don't know whether you can make it out, but there's, there's a load of eggs that the inside of that plant pot is actually covered in them. And there's the female, she was guarding them, uh, chasing everything away. This was a, this was the second spawner that they did, so they're still sort of getting used to it. So the the male doesn't really know what to do. He had actually fertilised like some of them, not all of them, but he had fertilised some of them. But yeah, he he just got out of the way with the um, with the rest of the fish uh, and and left it to the female. Yeah, so she is quite attentive. She's fanning the eggs. Hey, as I say, these are the ones I actually did take some out, but not that many. As you can see here, this is a day day or two later. Um, so all the unfertilized eggs have all gone white, obviously. Uh, and yet she's actually picking them off before they go fungus and affect the, uh, the, the viable eggs. Yeah, the male's a little bit more interested now, so he's on guard duty keeping all the other fish away. The next time they spawned, which was a couple of weeks ago, as you can see, they actually cleaned off some of the back glass uh, and they were laying their eggs on on the glass to, um, like straight onto it. A little bit harder to defend than in the plant pot, so I'm not quite sure why they didn't go in the plant pot again. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, it, it's quite a large spawn. And so mature pairs, um, th when they get to full size, which, you know, these are... I probably only just approaching half size at the moment, but when they get to full size, they do lay about a thousand eggs. Yeah, so as you can see, she's uh, she's going along uh, laying them, and he's coming after it. Like a mix of fertilising them and keeping everything else at bay. And did the other pair of chocolates uh, right over in the corner, which is where they tend to spend most of the time. Um, the, the geophagus, they don't seem that bothered to be fair. And the, the, the catfish, they're not that bothered either. Um, yeah, the, the Tianti seemed quite interested. Um, so the, I think it was actually the Tianti that, that, that had the eggs in the end. Um, yeah, did these ones. Like they, they did get fertilised, but I didn't manage to uh, to catch any of these ones out and raise them on. So just to recap slightly, um, so yeah, th these ones they're about twelve months old. They're about four and a half, five inches in size, which is when they do um, start to become sexually mature. So th that takes about nine to twelve months, and um, they do reach a full size, and. I believe it's after about 18 months to two years, uh, probably more on the two years to be fair. Yeah, so as I say, the, the common name for them is the chocolate cichlid or the emerald cichlid. Um, they are a really fantastic fish. Uh, they, as you can see, the colour changes in them are uh, quite amazing. So you get all these like wine reds, creams, browns, uh, the eyes as well, the, the eyes when they're breeding, if you noticed before, um, they do actually go like a really intense red. Uh, and when they're not breeding, so they're just going about the normal business, they, um, they, they, they're like an orangey colour. But yeah, they, they are a really fantastic fish. Yeah, they, it's one of my favourite ones in the fish room, to be fair. They remind me a lot of the... Um, like a, quite a few other species really, like I mentioned before, uh, the Yuaru, a um, bit like the Severums, a uh, bit like the Oscars. So it's all those large Central American fish that all come from the same area, the, the Amazon Basin. Yeah, so that's, yeah, they, they were named um, by Gunther in 1862. Uh, I'm not quite sure when they were first introduced in the hobby, um, but they have been around for quite a long time. So considering um, like the nature of the fish, it, it's I'm surprised that they're lot, not a lot more popular. That they are like really personable fish. Uh, they would make a uh, good wet pets. You don't need a massive tank for them, uh, like the four foot, five foot tank. Um, 
that, that that's probably about about right for them really uh, as you can see here I, i'm trying to show you uh, the, the size of them but yeah what i didn't take into account is the, the, <laughs> the rulers on this side of the glass and the fish are on the other end so yeah that wasn't very successful <laughs> Yeah, so a really good community tank. I'd, I'd recommend them all day long. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video on the chocolate cichlids. If you want to be notified next time I put a video up, please click the uh, the bell notification and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you all next time.